So you may have heard Google last week released Gemini, uh, which is their AI model to compete with GPT-4. And there was this one part of the demo that completely blew my mind. Check this out. Tell me what you see. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck, and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. What the quack? I hope that becomes a thing. I'm not here to play the whole video for you. You can check the link in the comments and go view the whole thing. It's actually pretty sweet, but I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's not all real. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not happening in real time like that. And they actually have a blog post explaining exactly how they do it. So they had this one example where they were playing rock, paper, scissors. And you see they're just passing an image along with the query from the user's voice. And initially it kind of sucks, right? Like it says, I see a person's right hand and then they change it. OK, they're knocking on a wooden door, complete lack of context. But when you pass all three of them at the same time and you say, what do you think I'm doing? And give it a hint that it's a game. Then it's able to say that you're playing rock, paper, scissors. So reading on is still pretty cool and it's pretty smart. It can do a lot of things, a lot of logical puzzles and things like that. Uh, but, you know, it's not what I thought it was. And reading it, it actually doesn't seem all that special. All of these things you can do today with GPT-4 with Vision. For example, you can pass it some images, you can pass it the query of the user via their voice with speech recognition, and then just get the response from the model and kind of get this feedback loop going where it reads out the response and then you try again. So I thought it actually doesn't seem that hard and I wanted to play around with Vue.js a little bit. So I gave it a shot and I built this, but in real time-ish. And I want to share that with you today. So open up your browsers and let's go to this link. All right, here we are on this website and this is available to everyone. It's deployed online. You can go there right now. I'll put the link in the description. So first thing you got to do is you got to get an OpenAI API key. And you can do that by going to platform.openai.com slash API hyphen keys. And you create a new secret key, give it a name, It'll ask you to prove that you're a human and that'll take like 15 minutes because the puzzles are getting kind of hard. Once you put a valid API key here, you should be able to click start and go for it. Now, in order to keep your OpenAI costs down, I do provide a browser text to speech option as well. And it's also faster. But for this demo, we can keep it a little more high quality, although it's going to be a little bit slower. OK, I've turned off my background so we don't get weird artifacts. Uh, no, I don't live in a high tech room like that. OK, let's hit start. What am I holding in my hand? You're holding a smartphone. Where are all these balloons coming from? It looks like you're having fun with some digital effects that add balloons around you. Enjoy the virtual celebration. Now, this doesn't only work in English. You can do it in any language. Let's try Japanese. Let's try Spanish. ¿Cuál es el color de mi camisa? What color is my shirt? Tu camisa es de color negro con un estampado de hojas en tonos grises. Okay, let's have some more fun with the Gemini style items. Uh, so this is not a kangaroo as some of my friends thought. This is a dinosaur. <laughs> let's see if OpenAI does better than my friends. Let's see. What do you see here? It's a drawing of a blue dinosaur wearing a party hat. Do all dinosaurs wear party hats? No, not all dinosaurs wear party hats. It's a fun illustration. Was it just me or was there a little bit of attitude there? Okay, let's try something else. Oh no, the dinosaur came to life and it's coming to eat you! Quick, find a way to tame it or make a run for it. What's the safer path for the person on the bottom to take? 
take the path leading to the right. Why is taking the path to the right safer? The drawing suggests that the path to the right is safer because there is a friendly character on that side, while the path to the left has a character that appears less friendly. How many writing utensils are here? There are six writing utensils. How many writing utensils did I take away? You took away three writing utensils. Will the black ball roll left or right? The black ball will roll to the right. What game am I playing? You are playing rock, paper, scissors. Okay, I'm out of ideas of what to do with this thing. But as you can see, it works pretty well. It's not perfect, it's a little slow, but it gets the job done. Now, I want to also give you a sneak peek of how it actually works under the hood. The speech recognition is actually not done with OpenAI. It's done within the browser using the WebKit speech recognition API. And that is free and supported by all WebKit browsers, which includes Edge, Chrome, Safari, and probably a whole bunch of others. I haven't tested this with other browsers like Firefox, Opera, all those other ones. So, you know, use Chrome, please. Now, once the text is recognized, it pairs that with an image that it sends to OpenAI's GPT-4 Vision API, but we're actually showing it a video and it doesn't handle video. So for that, we're actually sending a series of images that are stitched together. So here we go. If I turn debug images on, you can see if I raise my hand, the latest image is the one on the bottom right. And every half second or so, it's taking another snapshot. Now, the longer you want that window to be, or the more frequent you want it to be, the larger the image will be. The larger the image is, the longer it takes to process it, and the less you can fit in it. I actually am sending a pretty large image, and I limited it to nine frames, which is about four and a half seconds of context but you can play around with those things and see what works. Now, if you just give it a sequence of images, it's gonna be confused. It's not gonna know what's going on. So there's an actual prompt that goes along with this. You can find this project on GitHub. Again, link in the description. And if we just navigate to this source lib open AI file, you'll see how I'm actually doing that. Uh, I'm saying, here's the context. The user's sharing visual prompts through a video camera. The image frames are placed side by side, left to right, top to bottom, as in like this. There can be any number of images. So, you know, if you do it right away, there might only be one or two images captured. The user will ask you questions and expect a very concise response. And then I give it a bunch of rules. Respond concisely. Don't take forever. You know, save our money. Uh, focus only on what was asked. Don't refer to the person as the man in the picture or the woman in the picture. Avoid mentioning the image sequence at all costs. These are just frames of the video. Do not mention them. So we don't want to break the illusion that this is a video understanding tool. It is just a photo understanding tool. Uh, don't comment on the background items, facial expressions, all the random stuff. Uh, keep things friendly. Again, I'm just emphasizing that it should keep its responses short and never to mention the sequence of images. And from there, you just give it a regular prompt. You pass in that system prompt and then whatever the user says, you put here and you send it off to the API. And that's pretty much it. It sends back a text response, which then you can pass to the text-to-speech module. For the text-to-speech, that's in the TTS file. Uh, you can see it's just a very simple endpoint speech. You simply pass it the text and you choose the model. Now there is a higher quality model here, but I chose the small model. And of course I'm using Nova as the voice. Now this text can be in any language and you just send it along and you're done. You get back a blob of audio, which by default is MP3. And then you just make a little audio element and you play it. That's it. For the speech recognition, I'm actually not using Whisper. The browser's built-in speech recognition is pretty damn good. 
and it's very easy to use. You just spin it up, you say what the language is, and every once in a while it emits these result events which you can just parse and get your transcript. It's as easy as that. Now there's a lot more here around handling the interactions, starting the service, stopping it, restarting when the language changes and all that stuff, but the basics are actually fairly simple and that's it. Feel free to clone this repo. You know, all you got to do to run it is just uh, after doing an npm install, you do npm run dev and you can run this locally and make contributions to it if you want. I will be here to look at your PRs. Okay, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you had fun. I know I did. If you like seeing this kind of stuff, making cool stuff with AI, hit that subscribe button so you can see more stuff like this in your feed next time I release a video. So without further ado, what the quack?